good morning and welcome. It's been a while since I've done a vlog. Can't remember when. A long while. And to be honest, I don't generally do that many cart ones now because they're not viewed by that many people. A couple of hundred, maybe 500. Whereas the barbel vlogs seem to have a better audience, sort of 2,000 upwards. I think one of them is about 5,000. So, um, yeah, but anyway, I thought I'd come out today and just do a little um, margin session. When I say today, it's going to be a morning session. It's already, I left home at, <clears throat> I don't know what the time was, 26, because I'm only up the road from here and you're not allowed on here till 6, and the uh, maybe half 5, and the temperature was already 13 degrees. By lunchtime, it's going to be 25. So um, the idea is just a morning session. And in the shallows, I've come to this swim, I've caught from here before, certainly three weeks ago, just before they were spawning. I had a really good morning in here on a hot day like here. That said, the water was another two foot up at least. I was fishing literally off the edge of a tree, um, which is it's probably 10 foot from the bank. And I was dropping into three foot of water there. It's too shallow now. But I'm still margin fishing. I'm fishing 12, 15, 15 foot out, not even a rod and a half lengths out. So I've crept down here this morning. It's quite busy on the lake. A lot of cars up in the car park, but down here is, uh, it's still awkward to get to. The car park close to here is still closed. And you've got to come through a bit of mud. Whereas when I came here three weeks ago, you had to wade through water up to my knees. So uh, that was really good. No here. But nonetheless, I'm here, um, crept in here, Polaroids on, couldn't see any fish. Whereas whenever I've walked around here before, I can see fish. But I've put a bit of bait out on some spots, fishing, um, basically if you've watched my barbel frogs, a ground bait barbel mix on one rod. And so I put six balls out, I think it was, of ground bait. Put a little bit of hemp and corn in with that. A uh, little tip for you there, don't put that in until just before you're gonna throw it out. If you put the hemp and corn in when you make the mix up, within a few hours it's the hemp and corn will dry out and when you put it out they will just float to the surface i don't want them floating up i want them kept in the bottom so i was going to look from a bag of hemp and that but it's in the it's in my box but yeah keep your hemp and corn in your bag and then just mix a bit on the top when you want to put some more bait out so over that little spot that's clear it's a little pva stick with a uh, red fish mill Carp Company Icelandic Red with a little plastic corn on top just to really match what's going in there. So there's not much bait in there in that mix. Obviously, a lot of smell from the ground baits. It's a spice, spicy mix with uh, different size pellets in it. So a lot of smell and attraction down there, but not much bait down there because the pellets will be breaking down. They've all been soaking for 24 hours now in that mix. So. Um, that's the plan, get them in. So like I say, a little PVA stick of the ground bait on the hook limp. Just flick it out, a little underarm flick. That's all it is. Nice dong because it went down. I know I'm on a clear spot. Again, the other thing I did this morning when I first got here, that first sort of half an hour, 40 minutes, but like when I'm barbel fishing, I'm not rushing to get a rod out. You're gonna make a little bit of noise. So do it with bait, put some balls of ground bait in. Um, that, that, those six balls of bait, if there was any fish there, they've moved off. But that gives me a chance then to have a little lead around, make sure there's a clear spot. And then a the right hand rod is a little pink pop up on a spinner rig, just slowly sinking down. And again, it's an underarm flick. It is only, you know, 15, 16 feet out. It's further than I wanted to fish, but I didn't expect the water to be down quite as far as it's gone. But again, I've had a few casts, that's on a clear spot. And with that one, I've just put out two or three pouches of hemp, two pouches of corn, and some crumbed up boilie. And again, I can't stress on the hemp, I've made the mistake on other waters. Put a lot of hemp in and then it's fizzing all day, but you're not getting any bites. And the, the fish get so engrossed on the hemp, <laughs> they're not interested in anything else. So that's the plan today. I've got both the GoPros with me. 
Um, hopefully I will get a couple of fish and I'll get some action shots. But as I say, we're, uh, yeah, so we've got five hours, it's seven o'clock now. Um, and I will update the vlog as we go along. Okay, see you then. Well, welcome back. It's, uh, yeah, nearly nine o'clock now. And uh, nothing's happened yet. I mean, it's getting very hot already. I did have one take. It was, literally, I turned the uh, filming off earlier and yeah, just made a cup of coffee and just as I was drinking it, the right hand rod ripped off and pulled out of that fish. And when I, when I got the rod in, it was uh, quite a bit of weed already around the hook, e even though it was that slow sinking pink pop up. What you've got, I mean, if you, I'm sure you know, if you're an angler, as the sun comes up, the weed is rising. So um, even though initially that would have been off the bottom, as the weed's rising, some's got caught around the hook. Obviously not a good hook hold, so um, yeah, pulled out of that fish. And so I've changed that over to quite a high, well, I'm not fishing a chod, it's a stiff hinge chod. But yeah, it's probably, I don't normally like fishing that high off the bottom, but with the weed coming up, I'm fishing probably two inches off the bottom now, um, on the same spot. And then the left hand rod, I was getting lots of indications with the, um, that was a little PVA stick and the bottom bait. Lots of little bleeps and knocks and everything, which I thought probably meant I had weed around the hook. And in fairness, when I bought it in, there wasn't that much weed around the hook. But nonetheless, I've put it back out. And that's because there's not so much weed on that spot. I've put that out on a little, um, I think I've put it on a spinner rig, to be honest, remembering. But yeah, I've cut down a uh, pop-up. Atlantic red in so so it's a um, pellet shape sort of and still put a yellow topper on there and again I'm just introducing still a couple of balls of hand ground bait every now and again and what I have done I've also walked down there in the hope that nobody turns up later on there's a spot I mean it's probably still only a foot deep but I've put a few crumb boilies on there I'm just going to keep an eye on the spot I go back and the boil is gone or I go back and it's clouding up because fish are there feeding then I'll walk down there with one rod and have a go. But as I say the, the real idea of this vlog was going to be fishing in the edge but as I said earlier the water is three foot down to put that into context where my bank stick is now for my buzzers that was the water height three weeks ago when I came and I literally had a take, I was fishing, I said, this tree, and this is, God, I thought we were gonna get one then. This tree is six foot out. And that, I was literally just leaning over, dropping the lead down into three foot of water. And now you've got less than a foot of water on that spot there. So um, we'll see what happens. I'm still, I think we can nick a fish or two today, or this morning, but I think, just keep an eye on the temperature, there's not a lot of fish moving around. Fish that have shown have been a bit further out, but they're only small things, and uh, ideally I'd like to get one of the better fish. I had, I say that fish I had the other week, just off the rod tip, that was 26 pound, and uh, yeah, there's three 26 pounders in here, according to the bailiff. There is nothing bigger, you know, you can't, catch what isn't in here but I'm always aiming for a 20 pounder at least I don't know um, we'll see what happens and uh, yeah update the vlog in a bit see you then okay well welcome back yeah one o'clock I'm gonna wrap it up now um, yeah they didn't quite pan out as I'd hoped and obviously I wasn't actually fishing as tight in as I the idea of the video was so um, I won't put this on YouTube yeah I'll do a bit more recording somewhere um, I've got one other lake I can go to and uh, yeah fish close in as long as the water's not gone too far down um, or it may be I'll come back here August September when the water's back up and uh, drop back in here and try and get the sort of footage that I wanted to get what can I say about the day um, I had another take I don't know what the time was probably about 11 o'clock that same right hand rod and uh, yeah, I was wearing a GoPro and I thought this would make good footage and uh, yeah, I played it for a while and as I was getting it close in, the hook pulled again. So uh, 
yeah, that's what we've got on the GoPro, uh, a, a bit of the hook pulling. Um, I don't know when I last, oh. well, definitely I've not lost two fish out of two. I don't think I've lost two fish in a session. Maybe a few years ago, I probably, I'm sure I've said I didn't lose a, a fish in a whole year. So, um, yeah, strange that. And then the swans moved in on that spot and they were there and uh, like they were there so long having a good feed up and everything that obviously there was uh, nothing left there. So I wound the rod in while over there, let them have a feed. Once they moved out, I flicked the rod back out on the same spot, just put a couple of pouches of sweet corn around it. And uh, yeah, that's just gone off and just landed a scrappy little common, I don't know, 12, 13 pounds. I mean, I've seen that before after, after spawning, and they only finished spawning three weeks ago, that you tend to catch smaller fish further. Smaller fish definitely start feeding first. I don't know why that is, but they do. But anyway, so in a nutshell, that's about it. There's one rod still out and I'm almost packed down and hooking mat's almost dry. So um, as I say, yeah, I won't, I won't wrap this up and put this on YouTube yet. So thanks for watching it so far, but stick with it because um, I'll either finish it off at another lake that I can go to where you can normally fish in the margins as long as the water's not gone, gone down too low, or I'll come back here again later in the year just before the winter when the water's up and give it another go, just to uh, finish it off. But yeah, so that's it for now and um, update it. Well, as you're watching this, it will just smoothly go into the next section. But yeah, see you in a minute. Well, good morning, welcome back. Um, just gonna try and wrap up this uh, fishing in the margins or fishing in the edge vlog. Um, come up to a different lake. <clears throat> I came here a couple of weeks ago, to be honest. I was fishing the swim dead opposite me where there's a gravel bar runs out and people generally fish 12 wraps out or towards a, a reed line on there. So I dropped in there and thought I'd try fishing close in on one rod and see what happens. Well, the actual real story of that is even before I got a rod out, as I stood at the edge, there was a fish in front of me. Literally, as I looked down, it was at my feet and I had three foot of water there. So I literally just put, put the rod together lead core leader, spinner rig, pop up on it, dropped it down into the water. I hadn't even got the rod on a buzzer before it went off. And um, I can't remember what that weighed now. I think it was about 23 pound, I think it was, 23 and a half or something. So yeah, very happy with that. So what I decided to do was fish both rods on the inside of the gravel bar and see what happened. And um, obviously I didn't have the camera gear with me because I just wanted to see if that was somewhere worth doing a, the uh, In The Edge vlog from. And uh, yeah, I just had a mad day. I had 20 fish in eight hours or something. I think I had 320s in it, which proved to me, yes, this is a late come back and do it on here. So I um, thought I'd come back this morning, give it a go, and uh, got in the car park. 10 to 6, you're not allowed in there before quarter to 6. And uh, blow me, there's one bloke in there and he goes, where are you going mate? I said where I'm going, he goes, oh yeah, I'm going up there. And the swim I was going to go in is the swim he wanted to go in. So um, yeah, that scarped my plans a bit. And I thought, well I could still fish the same side and the wind's hacking that side. It's a westerly today, so I knew the wind would be going in there and fish would hopefully be going up that uh, margin again. So I ummed and ahed, I thought, I mean, there's only two of us on the lake. I wouldn't be happy if someone dropped in next to me. So um, I know the lake, I've fished it on and off over the years. There's another gravel bar quite close in on this side. So I've come around onto this side, and again on this side most people fish 12 wraps out to a uh, soft spot in the middle. And the left hand, there's a lovely um, tree line on the left hand side and you can generally get fish off of that margin. But I crept around here and I could see there was fish feeding literally just off to my left here they were feeding. 
and that was again I thought just over the gravel bar so um, I quickly set both rods up with a three foot lead coil leader went down to the water's edge dipped the rod down I've got three foot just over the gravel bar here so I've put um, a bit of seed and stuff out on the right hand rod just over the gravel bar and the left hand rod again just over the gravel bar and that's over a little bit of corn, a little bit of hemp and I've got yeah, a couple of wafters I mean I think if you can get away with it if you've got a clear bottom you're feeding you know small baits party blend like I am now or hemp and corn you want a bottom bait I prefer to have a, a slightly lighter bait, a wafter so invariably I will put a pop up with a split shot underneath and that will waft on its own that will turn a pop up into a wafter normally so yeah that's what I did put both rods out and uh, well hopefully I've got some footage of what happened next um, if I have I'll slip it in here
didn't weigh the smaller one uh, slipped in back and the uh, bigger fish was a spawned out 25 and a half pound common so yeah very happy with that so again like a matchman keep getting keep trickling the bait in on that spot you know that's what you want to do so i've got some bait out on the spot put the rods back i put the right hand rod back on it whilst i was sitting the lead left hand rod up right hand rod went again that was a uh, i think it was 14 and a half might be 15 can't remember i didn't photograph it didn't video it slipped it back so i want to get the rods back on the spot put the left hand rod on the spot before I could get the right hand rod back out, I had a little roach, probably about a pound on the left hand rod. Put the right hand rod out, got the left hand rod back out, that went again, tench. So, um, you know, definitely if you can fish the margins. The other good thing about it is you're not making much disturbance. I am literally dropping the rod down onto the spot, dropping the lead down, feeling it hit the bottom. You're never going to get a tangle. You're not making loads of noise. And that's the good thing about fishing the margins. So um, my plan is, I'm only going to do a couple of hours. I just wanted to come up and wrap up that flog of fishing in the edge. So I've just come out this morning. I've got half a bucket of party blend. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we do. So uh, that's the plan of fishing here. And... Uh, like I say, just to wrap up the vlog of fishing on the edge. If I get another good fish, I'll uh, video it or take a picture of it. But yeah, I shall be wrapping this up in a couple of hours time. So uh, see you then. Okay, so I'm gonna <coughs> wrap the vlog up now. It's 11 o'clock and uh, yeah, that's me. I've done, actually I've done an hour more than I said I would. I've done five hours. I was only gonna do four. But the whole point of this was to come here and just finish off that fishing in the edge vlog so um, yeah since I think when I spoke to you last time I'd had three I've had five now a couple more small doubles so um, yeah that's it I mean the whole point is just to perhaps make people think about what they're doing you know if they're um, if you're fishing you've done 24 we've all done it sat there for 24 hours can't get a bike can't think what's going on try bringing one rod in as long as you've got two foot in front of you the fish will come and feed and you think everybody they change the boilie they pick the boilie off they chuck it in the edge it's just free free food all the time for fish coming along the edge you know like i say as long as you've got two foot of water or more i'm happy to drop one in the edge and yeah nine times out of ten you can winkle a fish out from there not always i mean obviously i've come to a lake that it's not a rock hard lake where you get two fish a year and everything you know there's a good head of fish in here but even so i've seen people blank on here i mean the guy who's on the other side i've been watching him and he's he's not fishing the near side of his bar he's fishing over it i've not seen him have a take whereas this side you can't come this side of the bar you've literally got six inches of water but as soon as you go over the bar as you saw, I'm just dropping the bait down onto the spot and it's three foot deep there. And the fish are going up and down that channel all the time. And uh, yeah, it's worth a go. I mean, the other thing I would say, you're fishing in the edge. You know, if you can use lead core on your syndicates or clubs, whatever water you I'd use it. It just 100% always sits flat. Never shows. Thought we are gonna get a run now. The irony is that rod I'm just about to pack up but a fish showed out in the middle so I've just put one out probably 50 yards with a little PVA bag on it and yeah that might just be the PVA bag melting but yeah as I was saying you know if, if you can use lead coil use it um, the closer in you can get the better you can present that bait because you can just drop your bait down there you know you're not getting in any um, Sorry, I've just watched the other guy cast. He's cast the long way out now. Um, yeah, you're not going to get any tangles by fishing in really close. You can bait really tightly, or if you want to spread it out, you can spread it out. But there's always fish coming up and down those margins, in my opinion. 
and it will be the same on every lake you fish. So um, yeah, again, if you watch match fishermen or talk to match fishermen, see how many times they get smashed up by carp on their float rods where they're fishing close in. The carp come along, home in, and they know it's a free meal, basically. And uh, yeah, they get hooked on the float and they just smash the line up. So um, that's my two penneth on fishing the edge or fishing the margins. Um, I might do another one later in the year when the waters are back up on, or the water levels are up on some of the lakes. I might have another go. I'd like to put the GoPro under the water and try and capture a take on it as well. But we'll see. That's easier said than done. It can only be done in clear water. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, you can hit the subscribe button somewhere down there. Subscribe button and uh, you'll get notifications as and when I put on more vlogs. But yeah, see you on the bank. Uh, probably a barbel vlog coming up next. I'm due up on the rivers now. They've been open a few weeks so uh, or a couple of weeks. So yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy this and sign up and watch some more. Thanks for watching.